First, let's take a look at the payback period. The payback period is the length of time it takes to recover the cost of the investment. You can calculate it by dividing your in amount invested by your expected annual net cash inflows. So the payback period is the amount invested divided by expected annual net cash inflows. Again, be sure to bring these formulas to class so that you can calculate all your questions in class. Let's do an example. Take a minute to pause the video and read this and then we will continue the example. So the payback period is the length of time it takes to recover our initial outlay. We calculated by dividing 240,000, which is our initial investment, by 60,000, which is the amount that we expect to receive each year. So 240,000 divided by 60,000, your payback period is four years. In our earlier example, we had equal net cash flows. However, a lot of times companies will have unequal net cash flows. And let's figure out how to calculate your payback period when the cash flows are unequal. You would use a formula, which is the number of full years it takes to pay back. And if it doesn't pay back by number of full years, you've got to calculate the rest of it. So you do that by dividing the amount to complete recovery next year divided by projected cash inflow in next year. An example will help you see this better. So in this example, we invest 240000 and our net cash flows are 100,000 in the first year, 80,000 in the second year, 50,000 in the third year, and so on. When you have unequal cash flows, you have to go ahead and accumulate them, so add them up by each year to see how long it will take you to recover your initial investment. By the end of year one, we have 100,000 total cash inflows. We are nowhere close to recovering our initial investment. By year two, we have 180,000, which is 100,000 plus 80,000. We're still not recovered our investment. By the third year, we have 230,000. We're close, but not quite there. So it has, it'll take you three full years plus some more. How much is that some more? And that's where you use that formula. After three years, we have received $230,000 and we have 10,000 more to recover. How long will it take us to recover that 10000 in the next year? We look at how much we'll receive in the fourth year. So we'll receive uh, $50,000. So the payback period is three years plus you divide the amount you have left to recover by what you expect to receive in the fourth year, which is 10000 by 50000 giving you 0.2. So your payback period is three years plus 0.2 years, which is 3.2 years. The criticisms of payback method is that it does not take into account time value of money. We're going to talk about time value of money later on in this chapter, so I'm going to skip that discussion now, but we'll talk about it later. The second criticism is that it does not take into account any cash flows that occur after the payback period. So the, the payback method only takes into account cash flows that occur during the payback period. Let's say there are two equal investments. Um, each one requires 240000 and each one has equal cash payments uh, coming in over the next few years. The payback period of the first investment is four years, second investment is also four years. So they're equal in the mind of somebody who's just looking at the payback method. However, let's say that the first investment offers only those four years. After that, there are no more cash inflows whereas the second investment will offer cash inflows for up to 15 years. You would want to pick the second investment because that takes into account info, uh, cash that occurs after the payback period. But when we're looking at only the payback period, we just look at both of those and say, oh, both these investments are equal. We have no one preference over the other. That's why whenever you, we are doing investment analysis, we have to use more than one method to analyze our investments. So for the decision rule for payback period, investments with shorter payback periods are more desirable, all else being equal.